But Chris, uh, the floor is yours whenever you want, so that you know, sounds good. People will pop in. But like we said, we're recording this, so there's shilling opportunities in the future. Cool. Um. Yeah. So thanks for the invite. It's great to to be here and meet you guys. Um. I first came across MetaGame last year when uh, we went to Croatia to the, the DAO event there um, that Peace was involved in. And uh, yeah, just uh, love what you guys are doing. Like you've got this super authentic Taoist vibe going in this community. And yeah, so big respect for, for what you're doing. Um, in terms of VDAO, to give you a kind of, I'll just kind of give an intro about what we're doing, what our mission and vision is, and then I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. Um, but just to set the scene, <clears throat> VDAO is very interested in regenerative living. We're a community of, of people that want to accelerate towards regenerative living in a, a decentralized way. Um, and what we mean by regenerative living is really um, kind of using technology and, and, and building technology to live more in harmony with nature and live in a way and, and develop tools and products and tech that is and also just communities and experiences that are high tech, high touch and high nature. And we believe that these three elements combine into this regenerative lifestyle where, you know, we're not um, completely rejecting technology and going into our bunkers and like saying, oh, like we don't need any tech. And likewise, we're not like going into the tech world and being like, oh, like nature. So what? We're like harmonizing those two things and and using them to really regenerate the earth and also to to live in a regenerative way. Um, and a big part of what we believe in is and what we're kind of kind of building community around is that um, if we if we can move into a regenerative paradigm where we think more about ecosystem health and if we think more about taking actions which can promote positive benefits within the ecosystems we live in and likewise build tools and communities that also do the same, then we're likely to start seeing some positive externalities manifesting around us. So the ecosystems that we depend upon, if they get healthier, there's going to be feedback loops and benefits that come back to us and back to our communities. And we're really interested in that. And, and um, in, in contrast, we, we've got a, a manifesto that's live right now on uh, vdao.io. And we talk a bit in there about the meta crisis thesis. And in that, that thesis, <clears throat> which um, has kind of been developed by Daniel Schmachtenberger, um, there's a great Green Pill podcast about it, actually, and where he goes into detail about this with Kevin Awoke. Uh, but the Meta Crisis thesis, you guys may be familiar with it, um, is it's essentially saying like the way that we live right now and the systems that we built are generating all these negative externalities and negative second order effects, which are destabilizing our societies and our systems and our and our future, essentially. So we want to move out of that paradigm and move into a regenerative paradigm where we're building systems and communities and tools and tech that really generates positive externalities and regenerates ecosystems and brings people together in, in ways that can have positive impact on the world. So within VDA, we're a community of people that believe in this vision of the future, regenerative future, and we're, we're a community of ecosystem builders. So we're not just interested in theory and research, although that does have its place. We're not just interested in philosophy, although again, that does have its place. What we're interested in is crystallizing all this knowledge and bringing it together and building 
building shit, building products, building ideas, building solutions, and really regenerating the planet through our actions, with actions within our community. Um, and part of that um, is about building community, a community of like-minded individuals who believe in this this mission and vision and want to kind of come together and ideate and experiment and learn from one another. And in that sense, Vida was really, it exists as this bridge between the the world of digital builders and the world of physical builders. We've got members of our community who are like crypto natives, web free natives that have been around a space for years and are very familiar with web free and DAOs and and all that. But likewise we've we've got people in our community who come more from a from the physical world of of uh, building uh, regenerative landscapes regener- and uh, focusing on regenerative land design and building homes and building um, creating ecosystems in the physical world. So we've got people fr- who come from that background and we've got people who come from uh, a more digital background and, and they come together in VDAO as this this kind of melting pot of different ideas where you know we're we're all learning and and growing together and and eventually so at this phase in our uh journey we're really we're still early so our main focus right now is on bringing people together and creating space we're kind of optimizing the dial for emergence that's the way that i like to think about it and ben our community manager is really crucial in this work kind of creating space for interesting things to happen, connections to form and, you know, the, the DAO to emerge and the community to emerge out of there. Um, and we're focusing a, a lot on that. So at the moment, we're holding a lot of digital spaces. We've got weekly events happening. Uh, we've got a community call, uh, um, Twitter spaces. Um, and we've got a community voices event where people from the community come and share uh, something from their own experience. So, for example, next week we've got members of the community coming to talk about water systems and water management and rainwater harvesting. Um, and we also have a lunch and learn event where, like, for example, last week we had a lunch and learn on drone mapping and um kind of regenerative land design mapping. Uh, and we're building on this over time, kind of offering these opportunities for the community to connect and also providing education opportunities as well. So we want to upskill and support builders from the physical world to learn more about digital tools and onboard into Web3. And we're really interested in that. In fact, our next Twitter space is with uh, Griff Green from Giveth is going to be on that very topic. This is really important to our community. And likewise, we're also offering education opportunities to people from the Web3 community that want to learn more about regenerative land design. Um, we've got a lot of permaculture teachers in the in the community and a lot of regenerative land designers and consultants. So it's really a place where peer-to-peer learning is is happening all the time uh we've got weekly events and eventually we want to move this into to the real world so we we did kick off our event in um or sorry our DAO in east denver um and we kicked it off with uh, an in-person event which was a lakeside gathering with um joe lubin um one of the the Ethereum founders, the, the CEO of Consensus, and he joined us. He's really into regeneration. Um, he's really into regenerative living, and we just kind of there. There was about eighty of us just hanging out by the lake. We had a fire and we had some pizza, and it was just like a really nice vibe. And um, it was kind of we intentionally wanted it to be quite. Um, within a natural setting <clears throat> next to the lake where people could just kind of hang out with no 
kind of real agenda as such. It's just an opportunity for people that are interested in regenerative living <clears throat> to hang out. So we kicked off the DAO from there. And we've moved in to do more online events, but that, this kind of sets the scene and sets the template for the kind of um, future uh, in-person events we want to hold. So <clears throat> we're interested in doing um, something uh, in at FCC in July and eventually looking forward to next year, we're going to start running more uh, in-person events and Throughout next uh, in 2025, we're going to move more from this early foundational kind of emergence phase of the DAO into more of a kind of solution solution in focus, where we're actually bringing people together for idea thons to think about like what are what solutions do we need in the regenerative living space? How do we build them? And the community will be coming together to to find the the best solutions to some of the most challenging problems that, that we face. And we believe that Web3 bringing together physical builders and digital builders is going to lead to solutions that can have a kind of meaningful impact on the meta crisis and improve, improve our lives and, and help us transition into this more regenerative paradigm, which is our, our ultimate, ultimate mission. Um, so just to summarize, we're uh, starting off at the moment, focusing a lot on awareness raising and community building and education, both bringing together builders from the physical world and the digital world. And as our community grows and evolves, we'll be moving more uh, next year and towards the throughout this year towards more in-person events and eventually to uh, idea thons and larger um, events where we're um, kind of bringing people together to solve some of the challenges we face using uh, technology and developing products that are high tech, high touch, high nature. That's where we believe the <clears throat> the solutions lie in this in this area. So that's a kind of brief overview of, of Vidal. I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys may have um and yeah we can take the discussion wherever wherever you would like yeah i have many questions um you, you covered a lot in that I, I put some links in the side here i i put the link to the green pill podcast that you mentioned um i also put a link to one of our meta views with stephen reed um, that also goes into the meta crisis. Uh, nice. It's a, yeah, it's a great episode if you have some time. Um, I threw the consensus up in there. We mentioned your Twitter space with Griff. We had Griff here a couple weeks ago as well. Love, love the cross pollination happening. Um, I really like cool. the way that the, that you're going about it, and it seems like you are engaging people and and bringing in different different walks into the space like you know by going into the permaculture and um obviously mingling with other web3 projects but it it's good to see more more regenerative projects that are kind of bridging that gap between the like the high tech and like you're saying can you can you elaborate on on your high tech high touch mm -hmm. um, sure like what i guess what what do those three those three catchphrases mean the most to you yeah sure um just to pick up on that point about like bringing in new new people into the space um so my my background is originally I was a uh, did my um, master's in social work and worked as a, so, a social worker for many years, but then I got into permaculture and permaculture teaching after I moved from the city into um, a more rural area, uh, and I got really into permaculture mainly to build a, a forest garden 
at my place. Um, and what I notice within those communities is that uh, I have a lot of friends and even like teachers who I've learned from uh, in the permaculture space and the region ag space in general who are like kind of almost anti-tech. <clears throat> like they think many people in these communities think like tech is is just like you know causing harm and uh, we need to spend less time on screens and we need to get our hands back in the soil and <clears throat> the less tech we have around the better um, and very often primitive kind of techniques for uh, land design can take precedence in these communities and those approaches have a lot of value for sure and there is so much we can learn from these communities but our view is and in my view from what i've from my experience is that like if we reject tech entirely we're kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater um and so part of what we want to try and do is like break down some of these barriers that are that people see within the um kind of more regenerative spaces, permaculture spaces, region ag spaces, so they can access the benefits of web free technology. Because one of the primary benefits is is uh, coordination, and there are many people out there who have a lot of solutions in pockets all around the world that may benefit from some tech tools that could help to bring them together and coordinate and and help other people realize what what's possible and how we can regenerate land and that there are solutions out there to some of the challenges that we're facing as a, as a species. And it works also the other way, you know, like on the tech side there, I am also very familiar with, with tech. I've been in crypto since like to, I came in at the start of the last cycle 2020 and, you know, having been a builder in this space, I've seen like, a lot of focus on just like spending as much time as possible online and like all that and like maybe not connecting with nature and then there's that whole touch grass meme so there's definitely a disconnect between these two communities that we've identified and i think it's pretty it's pretty well known um and we want to we want to lower barriers on both sides and part of that is about this high tech high touch high nature piece when we talk about tech that's high nature or we talk about um, even just high high tech products that also take account of nature, what, what I mean by that is like it's uh, products that enhance the natural environment that, that we live in. Um, so for example, if I take it back to um, a very kind of um, personal level, like as an individual, if you have a home and you want to you want to generate some energy within your home, you put solar panels on and generate energy. That in itself, that's a regenerative solution. And then enhancing that also with. Uh, um, uh, food forest in the garden that's generating more yield and maybe a rainwater harvesting system that's generating more yield for you than a, uh, um, perhaps a, um, some battery storage and some other solutions that are helping you to become more anti-fragile in the way that you live, more regenerative in the way that you live. And then if we can add digital tools on top which incentivize that behavior and i think that's where web3 comes in so we we can develop more anti-fragile uh, lives as individuals but collectively if there's ways that we can coordinate and learn from each other and come together using uh, web3 primitives and DAOs and tools that can actually uh, bring communities together across the world in different uh, decentralized kind of pockets coming together uh, to learn from one another then we're enhancing the the anti-fragility and the 
I guess you could, the the resilience too of those those communities through those tools. Um, and the uh, so there's the incentive piece. There's um, the coordination piece that comes into play. And just briefly to touch on the, the what we mean by high touch, by that we mean like there are, there's an essence that you can you can pick up in some communities and uh, even like within a village, a traditional stereotypical village that you might imagine, uh, maybe a kind of slightly romanticized notion of what, what life can be like there. But if you imagine like people looking out for each other, good vibes, community it doesn't necessarily have to be like cool living everyone living together and and all that but like um there can be um community spaces so everyone has their private home but there's community spaces where there's like great vibes that to me is a, is a high touch environment and as we have moved more into urban communities um some of that has been it has become harder to find. Now, there's definitely communities within cities that maintain that high touch, those strong relationships, good vibes, hanging out together. You know, that's still there in certain pockets. But um, we want to foster that within Vidal, and we believe that that's that's essential. These these are like the the core components of regenerative living, um, and in our minds. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, it answers my question and makes me want to keep talking to you for, <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> no longer more, I'll have to cop, uh, pop into Vida. Um, yeah, that, that's good. You're very welcome. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it definitely answers my question. Um, I'm, I put a post up here of Solarpunk Nomads. They're going to be our guests next week. Uh, they they work on some projects with solar panels on bicycles and with batteries. Uh, I thought of it as you were kind of mentioning that. I really do feel that there's an underutilization of Web3 in the incentivizing people to do good regenerative actions. So I, I love that you're thinking in that way. And I I would like to see more things like that happen where I know you mentioned um, helping with like gray water and rain catchment systems. Uh, I think it'd be really cool to, to reward people uh, in, you know, in, in drip token or something, you know, to, to, mm -hmm. to collect water or, you know, there's some, there's some strategies that exist outside of blockchain right now for, uh, selling your solar energy back to the grid and stuff. I feel like Web3 and blockchain can, can be a huge stepping stone and things like that. Um, and yeah, where you, where you can be earning by just being, you know, be, being a good citizen and being a good, you know, regen or, or not even having to fly the flag of being a regen and just by participating in life, you are receiving back, you know, and kind of exemplifying that abundance. Uh, I feel like that's where this technology can really bring us and that sometimes we get lost in these meta conversations of DAOs and what's a DAO, what's this, and, and forget that we could put some of this to action in, in some simple ways, right? They, they don't have to be yeah. complicated at first. Um, so I really like the approach that you're taking. and. And I definitely will be tuning in and seeing how I can plug in. Sounds great. And yeah, I, I can't agree more about that. Like the like taking small steps and also not even having to put a particular identity on. Like like we don't have to say, oh, we're we're regens or we're this, we're that. Okay. Like there there's something about our current economy that incentivizes a very kind of extractive approach in it and a really uh, uh, unhealthy relationship with the natural world and i think the technology that we have available to us now particularly within web3 can help challenge that narrative and and not just from an intellectual point of view from an actual practical on a practical level and the ultimate vision would be if we're looking at like towards the end state would be 
a kind of regenerative network state scenario where you where we had decentralized communities of people living in a in a regenerative way connected and learning from one another and really being being rewarded and and benefiting from the the ecosystem benefits that they're generating through their own actions so in making their their homes more anti-fragile by introducing new energy systems planting food forests rainwater harvesting and building community like all these things have positive benefits and eventually um in a step-by-step way our ultimate vision is for is for yeah like a um a, a lot of these communities to be springing up all over the world um and into a kind of network state like uh group Absolutely. I I love the vision. Are there any um, other communities that that you see? You mentioned a Green Pill podcast. Are you working with Green Pill Network um, chapters yeah. around? Yeah, we're big fans of Green Pill. Um, we haven't tapped into any of the chapters yet, but we're we're exploring that at the moment, and we're also looking to spin up uh, some V community pods in different parts of the world and we're t- keep taking it in a kind of slow steady way and just really seeing where the interest is within the community but eventually we want to um, have a playbook um, and that will help people spin up a node within their area, very similar to to the way that, that the Green Po guys have approached it. Um, and we imagine like like there are tons of DAOs out there doing regenerative work. Like there's, I'm thinking about um, Regens Unite. They're uh, exploring the possibility of putting on a regenerative village at ECC, and we're talking with them about how we can get involved in that. Um, and there's other events happening through the Zuzulu network that we're really interested in um, throughout the year. And yeah, I think these challenges that we face are not going to be solved by any one individual or any one community. It's going to be a huge collective effort. And the more connections and cross-pollination there is in the space, the better from, from our point of view. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. 